So now as we start into electrophysiology, you guys know the EKGs only read electric. And now we're gonna start grinding, understanding some concepts that you need to know to answer the NCLEX questions. A few terms that we need to talk about here are gonna be polarization, depolarization, and repolarization. And I'll explain those so you know them really, really well. You wanna describe the normal sequence of electrical conduction. So what is the electrical conduction pathway? And I've seen a lot of questions about this. What are the inherent rates for each part of your heart? And then what are the essentials of the cardiac cycle, which what are those waveforms? Fluid and electrolytes are the terrible section for all students in nursing school. As it comes down to what electrolytes are doing what, what are the electrolytes that are positioned in the cell where you're gonna have potassium that stays in the cell or sodium outside the cell? You need to know what sodium, when you write out sodium in a plus, the plus and minus are ions. So just like a battery, when you have a double A battery, a battery in your hand, you got positive and negative, right? Your electrolytes are positive or negatively charged. So the movement of those ions throughout the cells in your body are what creates a movement and a friction that generates electric. Boogie, woogie, woogie. You're welcome for that, by the way. What this picture actually really captures good is it shows a cell, it shows potassium in the cell, and it shows sodium outside the cell. And during a polarization phase where everything is polar, everything is still, it's neutral, it's beautiful, and it's right where it's supposed to be, there's no electrical movement. But when we talk about depolarization, and when we use the word depolarization, that's stimulation of electric. Because what we're not allowed to say is a P wave represents atrial contraction because EKGs only read electric. So we have to use the word depolarization. EKGs only read electric. So a, a P wave represents atrial depolarization, not atrial contraction. Now, as you remember these things in your mind, you can think, okay, well, depolarization and contraction are kind of synonymous. Does that make sense? When I have a depolarization, that should cause a contraction. And we've already used a lot of weird terms, so I wanna slow down for a second. I told you a doctor once told me, if it's related to your heart, it's either plumbing or it's gonna be electric. What does electric do to your heart? Why are we even having this conversation? You're gonna have electrical movement and electric fires and stimulates your heart. I use this analogy where you hear a story of a line worker, electrical worker, and that grabs onto the line, right? And his buddy has to come over and kick him off. Well, why didn't his buddy grab him? Well, because he's gonna get electrocuted too. But the bigger thing is, is why didn't the line worker let go of the wire by himself? It's because the electric created a contraction. It created that squeeze. It stimulated a muscle movement and he can't let go. How does that fit back into this conversation here? If you got a problem with electric or you have a problem with plumbing, when it comes to electric, the purpose of electric in our heart is to stimulate the muscle to cause the contraction. But we're not allowed to use the word contraction. We can only use the word depolarization because EKGs only read the electric. If you got an NCLEX question asking about a mechanical response, that's when we need to assess the patient's pulse. We could auscultate it, we could palpate it, and generally the carotid is gonna be the better place to palpate for a pulse. So let's bring you back into this section. EKGs only read electric, and this slide is beautiful where I'm talking about polarization is the neutral state of the cells because when the cells depolarize, it causes the movement of those ions which generate electric and cause a depolarization. Now a repolarization is the resting phase. It's the resting phase of those electrolytes going back to where they need to go for that neutral polarization phase. But when it comes to your heart, generally it's gonna be a depolarization and repolarization. Depolarization, repolarization. I really like this image talking about the cardiac action potential. Again, this isn't not a big concept that you need to understand all the facts on this chart. But it shows the strength of electric and once the strength of electric gets so strong and a graded potential, it creates an action potential and has really big movement, 
which causes the electrical movement to go down the heart, which later we're going to talk SA, AV node, all of those things. But in this picture, what I want you to pull out of it is there's a few different electrolytes that are involved. Sodium, potassium, and calcium are all involved in the electrical movement of your heart, which makes sense because when somebody is in AFib, we can give them a calcium channel blocker for rate control. But also when we talk about electrolytes, when we talk about sodium, sodium causes seizures. So if sodium causes seizures, you know that sodium affects electrical movement. Hypernatremia, or high sodium, leads to high electrical movement. So as we're talking about electrical conduction, depolarization and repolarization, I just want you to know that sodium, potassium, and calcium all affect your depolarization or electrical movement of your heart. The next thing that you have to know for all this EKG is going to be electrical conduction system. So your SA node, your sinoatrial node that sits on top of your atria, is your heart's pacemaker. Think about that for a second. It's the heart's pacemaker. What do we know that the heart rate's supposed to be on everybody? Your heart rate's supposed to be between 60 and 100, right? Because we know if it's below 60, we call it bradycardia. If it's above 100, we call it tachycardia. So your SA node is your heart's pacemaker. It sits on the top and it goes down to the bottom, which makes sense because as it depolarizes or electrocutes over the tissues, it goes top down. And when your heart beats, it beats atria ventricle. So I want you to think of this electrical movement as wires that are inside the muscle of your heart. They don't sit on the external, they sit within the heart. So you need to know how the electrical moves. It goes from your SA node to your AV node, to your bundle of Hiss, to your left and right branches, through your Purkinje fibers that are gonna innervate the actual ventricles and cause them to contract. But EKGs only read electric. So if we're talking about electrical movement, we're actually talking about the word depolarization, which is gonna be electrical stimulus. So the inherent rate for your SA node is gonna be 60 to 100, it's your heart's pacemaker cell. And they actually refer to that on some of these NCLEX style questions that you're gonna see, the pacemaker of your heart, your SA node. Your inherent rate of your AV node is gonna be between 40 and 60, and the inherent rate of your ventricles is gonna be 20 to 40. You have to know all those facts. I really like this image because the blue line shows how it's not just one stream of electric that goes over it. As it depolarizes, it depolarizes all the tissues over the atria. It spreads out through that muscle. It goes down to your AV node through your bundle of fists to your left and right branches through your Purkinje fibers. This shows the electrical movement as it stimulates the muscle because as electric stimulates the muscle, it will cause a contraction. But as we're reading EKGs, we're gonna call it a depolarization. That's electrical stimulus. So just about the SA node, where is the SA node? It's in the top of your atria. What's the inherent rate of your SA node? It's between 60 and 100. For your AV node, which is your atrioventricular node, this one can be a backup pacemaker, it can be a, a gatekeeper, and we're gonna talk a little bit about that later. But you need to know where this one's located which is gonna be the lower portion of that atria into your ventricular septum. And what's the inherent rate of your AV node? It's 40 to 60. And if I asked you what waveform does an AV node create, it's gonna create the QRS, right? We're gonna talk about that later. And then the inherent rate of your ventricles is gonna be between 20 and 40, and that comes from the stimulation from your Purkinje fibers going into those big muscle walls and causing that ventricular contraction. So this slide shows that sequence of excitation, which starts at your SA node, it goes down to your AV node, to your bundle of Hiss, to your left and right branches, through the Purkinje fibers, and I love this picture for showing how that electrical movement actually takes place. If there's one slide in this whole thing that helps you understand and conceptualize what an EKG looks like, it's gonna be this one right here. This one's perfect. So heart excitation related to an EKG. What this shows are your different waveforms. So let's talk about these. What is the first waveform there on the bottom left? The very first small little movement or a hump. 
that's called a P wave. And the next one is gonna be a QRS and then a T wave. If you look at the SA node firing on this first image, when the SA node fires, that's what initiates the P wave. So if I asked you, when the SA node fires, what the SA node is actually located in the atria, that initiates which wave? A P wave. So if that initiates a P wave, then I should be able to ask you a follow-up question that says, a P wave is what represents atrial depolarization. So a P wave is the stimulation of electric over the atria, which a P wave is what stimulates the atria to contract. But we're only reading electric, so we have to use the word depolarization. A P wave represents atrial depolarization. Good. So the next movement here is as that electric moves over the atria and it moves down to the AV node, which is right in that atria ventricular septum area, that's when you're gonna see initiation of the QRS, the Q wave that goes down. So on your next image, the AV node goes down through the bundle of His to the left and right branches to the Purkinje fibers. And as it does all of that, that movement stimulates which waveform on an EKG? A QRS. If I asked you what a QRS represents, you would say a QRS represents ventricular depolarization. That's electrical movement through the bottom part of your heart, through the ventricles. I know this is a lot of information to take in, but stay with me because I know you have it right here on this slide. This is when we're linking it together. So you have a PQRS T wave. A P wave is the initiation of the SA node shooting electric across the atria, which causes an atrial depolarization. It should cause an atrial contraction. As it moves from the AV node to the bundle of His to the left and right branches, Purkinje fibers, that stimulates the QRS, which a QRS represents ventricular depolarization, which should cause a ventricular contraction, but we're not allowed to use the word. And the last part is gonna be your T wave. A T wave shows ventricular repolarization or ventricular resting. So there's some questions that come up here and says, well, I see atrial electric depolarization, zap, squeeze, and I see ventricular zap, squeeze, and I see ventricular relaxation. Why don't I see atrial relaxation? And the answer to that question is because that waveform is so small, it actually hides behind the QRS. I hope that makes sense to you. This slide is extremely important to learn the alphabet so we can write our book about EKGs. In one cardiac cycle, what are the waveforms we have? We have a P, QRS, and a T wave. The electrical conduction system starts at our pacemaker cell, which is the SA node, it fires and stimulates a depolarization of the atria. A P wave represents atrial depolarization. It moves down through the AV node, and you can see in the image here, through the bundle of fists, left and right branches, Purkinje fibers, and that movement stimulates electric across which part of your heart? Your ventricles. And that electrical stimulus, zap, squeeze, the electrical stimulus causes a depolarization, which should cause a contraction. And after that, the T wave represents ventricular repolarization, which is when those ions move back to where they're supposed to be. So I like this slide, so it really goes back to identifying those waveforms. This is gonna show the, the basic waveforms, which is the P, the QRS, and the T wave, and how they're actually gonna be labeled. What's unique sometimes is even that QRS on here, it shows that first downward inflection is the Q, R, and S. Sometimes you actually don't see that Q, you don't see that first downward inflection, which is gonna be okay. We're gonna recognize throughout these lectures that some of these QRS and these waveforms are really gonna be unique to the individual. So the P wave is the first normal wave of the cardiac cycle, that's atrial depolarization. Sometimes the NCLEX does ask questions about, and it uses words, it's not just images. So you need to explain 
what a PR interval is. And a PR interval is the initiation of the SA node until it gets to the AV node. So the PR interval is the initiation of the first P wave until it starts at the QRS. And we need to measure that time because if there's a delay, it might be some kind of block, right? The QRS complex represents ventricular depolarization. That's movement that we've talked about. And then also there's gonna be questions about an ST segment. Now, an ST segment is gonna be important. Have you ever heard of a STEMI, which is an ST elevated myocardial infarction? So ST segment can tell us if you have issues with circulation or blood flow to the heart, and we'll talk about that a little bit. The T wave is that ventricular repolarization or ventricular resting that I want you to know about. And then sometimes I've seen NCLEX style questions. I don't think this should be on the actual NCLEX itself about U waves. So U waves are actually upright deflections. They're not down reflections. Some people are confused about that. And U waves, I call them unicorns because you don't really see them very often. I guess unicorns you never really see, but there's not enough evidence to actually tell us what U waves are. We just really believe that it's further repolarization of the ventricles. So it's not something that should show up on the NCLEX. But if you do see something about a U wave, it's an upright waveform that happens after a T wave. And we're gonna have an image of that for you. Now the isoelectric line, the isoelectric line is gonna be the invisible line that your whole EKG waveform is supposed to go on. So your P goes up, your QRS, you have movement, and your T wave. All of these waveforms need to come back to an invisible line as their baseline. And this is an example of that on this waveform and current flow. So to wrap this section up, because we don't wanna to spend too much time in any section, you're really doing good with the basics, but there's a lot of big fundamental properties in this section that you've added on, okay? We have went from the electrodes to the AMP, and now we're talking about the conduction system, and you have to know the conduction system. You need to know the terms depolarization, repolarization. So the depolarization is stimulation of electrical movement, and repolarization is gonna be the, the resting phase of that. You need to know what electrolytes are gonna be involved in your conduction system. You should already know the worst case scenario for causing issues with your heart is problems with which electrolyte? Your potassium. But sodium causes seizures, and then also calcium can be involved too because we know with AFib, we can give calcium channel blockers for rapid rates. The cardiac conduction system started from the top to the bottom and you have to know it is your SA node to your AV node to your bundle of his to your left and right branches through your Purkinje fibers. You need to know the inherent rates, the pacemaker, your SA node is gonna be between 60 to 100 beats per minute. Your inherent rate of your AV node is between 40 to 60. And the inherent rate of your ventricles through your Purkinje fibers is gonna be 20 to 40. With that heart excitation, you need to know your SA node causes atrial depolarization, which is represented by which wave? A P wave. The stimulation through your AV node causes a QRS, which is ventricular depolarization. And that T wave is gonna be ventricular repolarization, or that resting phase. And that isoelectric line is that imaginary line that returns all of these waveforms back to a baseline. We call that the isoelectric line. That's gonna wrap up the waveform and conduction flow for this section.